one of my dad's great passions was clearing land. And in the short time that we had together, my father and I cleared acres of land, turning brush and woodland into new lawn. Oh, how my dad loved to mow the lawn. We were fortunate that we lived in the country, and so we could take all that brush and trees and pile them in great piles until my dad deemed the pile was big enough. And then, usually on a Saturday or Sunday, we would light it on fire and let it rage all day long into the early evening. I was inspecting one of those fires the day after. It was nothing but a pile of white hot ash. Being the inquisitive kid I was, I found myself a stick and began to poke at the ash. I found that if I stirred it enough, I could turn over a burning ember here and there. If I blew on it, it would burst into a flicker of a flame, but soon die out. I did this throughout the fire, conjuring up flames and watching them burn out. I soon got tired of the game and went off and did something else. When I came back a short time later, I discovered that the meadow was on fire. There were tongues of fire racing across the meadow in every direction. It seemed some of my little flickering flames had taken flight. I grabbed a shovel and beat the flames down and finally got the fire out. But the damage had been done. The meadow was marked. And there would be some explaining to do when my dad got home. Today we gather to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, the gift of the Holy Spirit that came upon the disciples like the rush of a roaring wind and tongues of flame. What if we looked at those tongues of flame in a new way? Not so much in that traditional portrait of the disciples where they looked decidedly like candles on an ecclesiastical birthday cake, but rather more like that fire that raced across the meadow, raging out of control. For the Holy Spirit is God's change agent. It is that which burns within us and through us to change the world, that the world might come to know God, and that we might learn to love one another. It is that gift that we receive in baptism in the laying on of hands. The Holy Spirit is that which calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and keeps us in faith. It is that faith that enables us to see in the world the work of God in, with, and through us and around us. A work that is forever changing us and the world that we live in. These last few weeks have brought dramatic change. change in how we see our lives in almost every aspect. What does it mean to be family? What does it mean to live alone, really alone? What does it mean to own a business? What does it mean to be unemployed? What does it mean to be government? What does it mean to have authority? What does it mean that suddenly your menial job has become essential? What does it mean for us to be church today? That question has plagued me for more than a decade as I've recognized more and more 
that the way we used to do church isn't working anymore. In fact, it has been my daily prayer that the Lord give me a sign as to what this church is supposed to look like. I wish I hadn't prayed so hard. For these last few weeks have been a real kick in the tushy by the Holy Spirit to get my act together and try to be what I've been talking about over the years as church. What is it to be church today? One of the questions that has bothered me over the course of these weeks is the use of the term essential. Particularly in President Trump's latest report where he demanded that the churches be open for gathering as essential. The question that it begged for me was, who is it essential for? It's certainly not essential for God that we gather because God's work has been ongoing through this whole pandemic. In fact, in some ways, the church has done far more in doing the work of God without gathering than when we were able to gather together. We have found new and creative ways to share the good news. <clears throat> we have been present in the world in ways that we've never been present before. So obviously we're not essential for God's work. Are we essential for the world that we gather on Sunday morning? I think not. For our work in the world has been far more dramatic now that we've managed to get outside of our buildings. So who is it essential for that we come together? Perhaps it's essential for us that we may be fed and nourished to do the work that we have been called. But perhaps the essential church is not the one that gathers on Sunday, but the one that is scattered on Sunday and that lives the other six days in the world. What if we were to see the work of God in the Holy Spirit, working in us where we are planted Monday through Friday? What if we saw our vocations as a holy calling, where God is calling us to be church in the real sense of the body of Christ? What if we are called to serve those we work with, those we serve, those we live with? What if that is the true work of the Holy Spirit? What if that is where God is calling us to change the world, where we can make a difference? where our presence and the presence of God in, with, and through us is indeed essential. The fires are burning and the wind is blowing. We don't know where it comes from or where it's going, but we can feel its presence and its power. The world is changing, and God has set us on fire. Will we burn with renewed passion as the essential church in the world? 
or will we just get burned? My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn.